Hello and welcome to another video from Natasha Lee and you guys keep asking me the same questions again and again in the comments. So this video is for you. You keep asking me why are my nails lifting, why are they chipping? Well here are the top 10 reasons why and how to put them right. Number one, you wouldn't think it is such a big deal, but it really, really is. You're using the wrong nail file. How can you use the wrong nail file? Basically, there are different grades of nail file, and the smaller the number, the more abrasive or the more rough that nail file is, and the higher the number, the more smooth it is. If you take a look at nail files that are used for acrylic or gel nails, they tend to be a 100 or a 180 grit. 100 is rougher, than 180. Those should never ever be used on natural nails. On natural nails you should never use anything more abrasive than a 240 nail file and also it does make a difference to the quality of the 240 nail file. Some aren't as well made as others. You want a really nice smooth 240 nail file. And why does it matter do you ask? If I'm just doing a quick little file, if I've just scuffed a bit the corner of my nail? Well it matters because when you use an abrasive nail file and you take it to the end of your nail and start to file, then what you can do is actually tear apart those nail plates layers. That can lead to chipping of the ends of the nails. You might not be able to see it, it would be under a microscope, but it's there and that's why nails tend to chip along the edge. It's easy to fix, just get a nice quality 240 nail file or even above, you can go to a 1200 if you want it to be really smooth and file your nails. It doesn't even matter if you go back and forth like a seesaw action. I know it's been told for years, don't seesaw back and forth. That is not correct. That only matters if you're using poor quality nail files. Research has shown if you use a good quality 240 grit nail file, you are fine to go back and forth on those nails because if it's good and it's fine, it doesn't separate those nail plate layers. So you're completely okay. And from my experience, I can confirm that because I always seesaw action and I did in my salon and I never had a problem with my clients and chipping at the ends of their nails. Number two in the things you're doing wrong and one of the biggest reasons that your nails might peel or chip is water, believe it or not. And it's not drinking it the problem, it's submersing it. Our bodies might be up to 60% water, but actually soaking your nails in water is really harmful to them. The natural nail absorbs water really, really easily. There's only a couple of things that can actually make their way through the nail plate layers because they're so tightly packed, and that is water, sebum, and jojoba oil. If you have bent nails or damaged nails or very curved nails, you'll notice that when you go in the shower or the bath, that sometimes that curve opens back up. I've actually had people say in my comment section that they do that before they paint their nails. Well, that's the problem. Your nails have absorbed all this water and then you're going along and sticking a product on top of it and when all the water dehydrates back out the nail, the nail is going to contract. It's going to cause chipping, it's going to be shrinkage underneath the polish and it will cause the polish to be looser on top of the nail. That is a huge reason why polish lifts and chips. If you know that you're going to be needing to have your hands in water for a prolonged period of time like washing up, wear gloves. Please, please wear gloves. You wouldn't believe the difference it makes just wearing gloves to do things like washing up. If you have a habit of soaking your nails before you do your cuticle work, I really would recommend against it. You can do a semi-cuticle work, which doesn't require full submersion of the nails, and we'll talk more about that in a moment. But whatever you can do, if you're planning on doing your nails and you have submersed your nails in water, give it quite a bit of time, at least half an hour afterwards, for your nails to dry out before you start working on them. Number three, cuticle work. It is so, so important. If you want to be able to have your nails looking beautiful and perfect and really neat around that cuticle area, but also last without chipping, or if you wear enhancements, you don't want the gel polish or the gel or acrylic to lift, cuticle work is normally one of the biggest causes of lifting in enhancement products and gel polishes. If you don't know what cuticle is, cuticle is not normally what people show it is. At the base of your nail, you have a rim that goes around the nail, which people mistake for cuticle. That's actually your epinychium, and it's a barrier or a seal to protect your nail and the matrix from infection. What it actually is, when the nail grows, it's like this keratin pouch, which you might see on some people when they have a lunula or a half moon at the base of their nail. When your nail is growing, the keratin is pushed through a thin slit, a bit like a letterbox, and the liquid is pushed out. And what happens as it grows out, a thin layer of skin can attach to the top of that nail. That's what cuticle is. 
cuticle is dead skin it's non-living tissue however because it is just basically dead skin if you paint over it or you apply acrylics over it the minute you go near water it will absorb the water and your nails will pop off for aesthetic purposes it looks so much neater and it's so much easier to apply your polish to your nail when there's none of that dead skin it's a nice clean little perfect canvas to paint straight onto never forget cuticles people they're really really crucial number four is base coat and actually this incorporates two things which you might not think about one of the biggest reasons apart from cuticle work that nails lift and don't last is the nail plate or the actual hard bit of nail that you paint on has not been cleansed properly it is really crucial that you remove any contaminants any natural oils or greases from that nail before you paint or apply any products onto it so you can actually use a number of things for this i use a balance between pure alcohol and pure acetone to actually cleanse my nail plate layers and once you've done that, just be sure not to like touch your face or touch the top of your fingernail before you apply anything because you will transfer oils and grease onto that nail. And that can cause a huge problem with regards to lifting and peeling. Once you've cleansed that nail, be sure to get your primer or your base coat on straight away. Base coat is so important because it's basically like a primer. You're applying something that the color is designed to go onto. The color isn't designed really on most products to go straight onto that natural nail. It needs something to sit on and that's where base coat comes in. Base coat for gels, gel polishes and nail polishes acts as a foundation to hold them in place and give them that bit more strength. So before you skip the base coat, think very carefully, why do your nails last better when you go and get them done professionally? One of the reasons normally is base coat. Number five, capping. What do I mean by capping? Capping is where you paint the edge of the nail. So if you were to look at the nail, it's the actual edge of the whole nail. Why is capping important? Well, capping is important because you need to do it with all of your layers. You need to do it with your base coat, your color coat, and your top coat. And that's because it's almost like a bumper or a buffer. If you imagine you just paint the top of your nail, it's just sitting there. The minute you knock the ends of your nails, they can peel or chip off. So by capping the nails, you're offering that extra protection, that bumper, so that if you do knock your nails, it might just be a bit of the polish that gets marked. It won't actually chip or it won't damage the end of your nails. Also, by capping the end of your nails, it helps prevent overabsorption of water. If you think about it, if you're only covering the top of your nail with water and you're not protecting that edge where you've just filed, then it's gonna be easier for that nail at the end to absorb water, which makes the nail expand, which will make the polish or product chip off. If you have super short or bitten nails and you're struggling, it's still important to cap and it is still possible to do it. You just need to use a brush dipped in nail polish remover or acetone to remove it off the skin. That helps prevent overexposure and reactions to products. Number six, touching skin. When you paint your nails, do you have a habit of going onto the actual skin around the nails? Well, that's a huge cause of lifting in both enhancement products and in gel polish and nail polish. What happens when you go near water, the skin around the nails will absorb some of that water and it will expand and then contract again afterwards, which almost acts like a lever on the nail and it will start to push off the product or lift the product. Also, it just doesn't look very pretty. If you want to know how to paint your nails without touching the skin, I've got a video in the top right corner now which will show you how to paint your nails like a professional. Number seven, top coat. Again, it's not something that the nail companies are trying to sell you to make more money, although they probably do, but it is really, really important. It doesn't only make the nails look lovely and glossy, it is vital to the integrity of the whole nail design. Color coats aren't really normally designed to be very hard wearing. That's what the top coat is for. And that's why if you notice, if you just apply a regular color coat to your nails without base coat and without top coat, it tends to crack and chip really, really quickly the minute you knock your nails. However, However, when you apply top coat it has a level of flexibility it tends to be a bit thicker than a regular polish which you'll notice when you apply it that together when you cap the end helps you hold that whole design together and it gives you more resistance against chips and knocks and bangs if you want your nails to look feel and last at their best then you need to be using a base coat color coat and a top coat if the brand that you use requires it again like the color and base coat be careful not to over apply your top coat so it floods into that cuticle area if it does take a fine detail brush while it's wet with some acetone or nail polish remover and clean up around the cuticle area to prevent the skin touching the polish and when it comes to top coat I get people saying about how many layers and we do nail art designs it doesn't matter how many layers you're applying if you apply it nicely and cleanly also think of it on a positive the more layers the more protection you don't want your nails to look like big thick cheese wedges but a few more layers of polish isn't gonna make that much difference but it will help you protect them a little bit more number eight cuticle oil Cuticle oil is 
hugely underestimated, hugely. It is so important. And I can confirm this from my salon that I could tell the difference when people came back for their reappointment of who had been using their cuticle oil and who hadn't. It was so obvious, especially when you're removing product. A good quality cuticle oil will normally contain jojoba oil in it. And that's because jojoba has a very similar structure to sebum, which is the natural oil that we produce in our bodies. And that can penetrate the nail plate layers. So jojoba acts as a carrier oil, taking moisture and vitamins or whatever is in your cuticle oil through your nail plate layers, providing the molecules aren't too big. That's getting a little scientific, but basically there are certain things that do penetrate the nail plate layers. Vitamin E with jojoba is one thing, which is why you'll see it in a lot of good quality cuticle oils. Why is it so important though? Well, cuticle oil offers flexibility. So when you apply the cuticle oil on the base of your nail, it just doesn't reach the base of your nail. Your nail has channels that run through it from the matrix to the tip, and it can carry through those channels and actually keep the moisture underneath your nails. If you've ever had certain brands of gel polish, you may notice when you take them off that you have dehydration patches underneath, and that can be avoided completely by using cuticle oil. Yet how does the cuticle oil work when the nail was covered in gel polish? Well, that's because whatever you apply at the base gets drawn through the nail. I always find a huge cause of chipping, damage and lifting to be on nails due to dehydration because the more dehydrated and brittle the nails are, the minute you knock them, bang them or bend them, then the polish in the product gives way. You want flexible nails that are going to take a bit of a knock and a bang but bounce back. And you can get that using cuticle oil. Keep that moisture there. You want the cuticle oil because it tends to be formulated specially to go through those nail plate layers. An area that's often forgotten is not just the base of the nail around the cuticle area, but do underneath the tip as well. Because when you're washing hands and using antibacterial gels and things like that, it can hold underneath the end of your nail and dehydrate your nails. Make sure that you clear any soap or anything from underneath your nails after washing them and always apply cuticle oil. If you're having a bath or a shower and you know that your hands are gonna be submerged in water for some time, it's not practical to wear rubber gloves in the shower unless that's your thing, in which case I'm not judging. But if it's not your thing, then apply some cuticle oil first. Do it around the base of the nail and underneath that tip and it will offer you some protection when you go in the bath or shower. As for how often should I apply cuticle oil? Well, it kind of depends on the state of your hands and nails as well as a few other factors. I would say definitely you should always apply it before going in water and at bedtime and ideally one other time. I tend to keep a few cuticle oil pens in my handbag, in the kitchen, next to my bed. And when I just remember and I look down and my hands look dry, I apply some. You really need to be applying it at least twice a day though and before bed is essential. Do it after you've washed your hands and as you're about to get into bed, apply the cuticle oil so it can soak in and work overnight. Number nine, a huge thing that people do wrong with their nails is cleaning products. I love cleaning products. I get a bit addicted to cleaning products and if I find something that cleans my bathroom without too much scrubbing, I am on it. However, if I then don't wear gloves and do it, it just strips that moisture out of the skin and the nails. And the certain products, which I'm not gonna name, bang and the dirt is gone, is amazing for your bath. However, it is a killer for your nails. You can feel it sting if you use it without gloves on. Cleaning products, detergents, anything like that is really, really drying and damaging to your nails. So if you know you're going to be cleaning or using any products like that, please wear gloves first and remember to take care of your hands. And finally, number 10, nails should be treated as jewels, not tools. There are a number of things that will damage and break your nails, which you can easily avoid, easily, for the sake of like two or three seconds more. Believe me, I know. Do not use your nails on ring pulls. I now grab a spoon, a fork, a key. I actually have been known before now to take off my eternity ring and my engagement ring to use them to lever up ring pulls. Okay, that could damage them, but I've still got my nails intact. Let's put priorities here. Some of the common things that do cause you to break and chip your nails. Ring pulls is a huge one. Please be careful with ring pulls. Another one here in the UK, we have a lot of toilets that no longer have a flush on the side. They have a push button flush and that can be a nightmare doing the pushing action. It can happen on anything. Toilets are a particular one in the UK, but also lift buttons, any buttons you're coming across. If it feels like it's too deep of a hole for the button, use your knuckle instead. It makes it much, much safer and much easier for your nails. If you've taken the time to make your nails look beautiful and you're enjoying them, you want it to last. Just a little bit of mindfulness when you're doing things round and about can make all that difference of keeping your nails perfect. Trust me, 
Mine are hugely long and I do all the DIY and decorating and very, very rarely break a nail. I hope this video has been helpful for you. Please let me know if you'd like to see any more videos like this. If you'd like to become a Natasha Lee VIP along with so many other people, then hit the link down below for natashalee.vip to sign up to get behind the scenes access and more information along with a series of reward tiers for different bits of pieces. In the meantime, thank you very much for watching. I look forward to seeing you all soon. If you've enjoyed this and you're not yet subscribed, please hit the subscribe button and next to it there's a teeny tiny bell icon if you hit that bell icon youtube will notify you when i upload so you never miss a video who'd want to miss a video everyone needs a ginger in their life especially one that knows about nails take care everyone i know we'll see you all next week